Okay, guys, who wants to see a Vortex supercharger tested on a 383 stroker? But yeah, it's not a Vortex centrifugal, it's a Vortex twin screw. Hello, everybody, I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. If you would be so kind, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today, we're talking about a Vortex supercharger, but guess what? There's a twist. It's not the one you think. It's not a Vortex centrifugal supercharger. It's actually a Vortex twin screw supercharger. That's right. Not very many people know that Vortex back in the day offered a twin screw supercharger in addition to their centrifugal blowers for an LS application. And I tested one on a 383 stroker. In addition to adding boost to our NA combination, I also did a couple of other tests while we had it on the dyno. I tested a fast intake manifold and a set of 1.8 roller rockers and then added the blower. Let's check it out. Okay, let's jump right in on our 383 stroker with, <laughs> of all things, a twin screw Vortex supercharger. I know that that's unusual. I'm not even sure if they offer this anymore, but back in the day, this was their answer to, you know, make things so that the supercharger, unlike the centrifugal stuff that they normally sell, that this would be something that had, you know, more immediate boost response and stuff. Maybe something better for a, you know, a truck application or something. But we're going to take a look at a test that I ran back then. But we also did a number of other tests while I had the motor on the dyno, like I normally do. So we're going to take a look at lots of cool stuff in addition to adding boost, which, you know, that's always a good time. So right now we have our test motor. This is a 383 stroker. So it starts out with a 4.8 or a 5.3 iron block. We bored that thing 3902, so up from 3780. We also installed a four inch stroker crank on it. This one this one came from the guys at SCAT. We had a set of 6125 forged rods in it, and the pistons that we used were a dish piston, so we you know kept the compression ratio uh, reasonable. In this case, it was nine and a half to one when combined with our ported 706 heads came from the guys at Total Engine Airflow. So uh, this was their stage two heads. So full porting, both on intake and exhaust and on the combustion chamber. And they put larger valves in this head too, just the way, the way that they do on their, um, on their stage two package. We ran a, a, a mild camshaft in it. This came, one came from the guys at Trick Flow. It was 575 lift a 220, 224 degree duration split. And this one had a 112 degree lobe separation angle. We also, the way that we normally do, we ran this thing with uh, a Mazir electric water pump. We had inch and three quarter long tube. These were headers were from QTP with collector extensions. We had 36 pound injectors in this thing, 60 pounds of fuel pressure. We ran at first with a tr factory, tr the long runner, <laughs> excuse me, long runner truck intake manifold and the stock throttle body on the truck intake manifold. We ran this one back in the day. I didn't do the tuning on this one. This one was run with a, a Mephi uh, EFI setup. So run in this manner, wow. our three, our low compression 383 stroker produced 465 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 485 foot pounds of torque. And our first test that we did was to install a fast intake manifold. So we went from the factory long runner truck intake manifold to the unequally long runner fast intake manifold. And here's what happened when we installed the fast manifold in place of the truck manifold. We also, in addition to the fast LSXR intake manifold, we also installed a 102 millimeter throttle body. And I know, please make the comment right now, but, it, but all the power came from the throttle body upgrade. Now you could put a 200 millimeter throttle body on the truck manifold and it's still gonna do what the truck manifold does. But from the fast manifold, like we normally do, we got a really good gain from the, the fast manifold. And the more powerful the combination that you tested on, the greater the gains that you're going to get. But the fast manifold pushed peak power up to 492 horsepower. Peak torque up was up as well right at 500 foot-pounds, 500.5. We could call that 500, we could call that 501. And the fast manifold was better from about 35 or 3600 RPM all the way out to uh, 6000 RPM, which is beyond where this thing, this 383 actually made peak power with this small 220 cam. Now let's check out some other mods that we made and then jump into some boost. Okay, now it's time to make another modification to our 383. You'll remember we ran our 383 stroker with a small trick flow cam ported heads and the factory truck manifold. 
and it produced 464 horsepower and 485 foot-pounds. And then we added the fast manifold and pick power a pretty good bit, um, 492 horsepower and 500.5 foot-pounds of torque, so 500 or 501 foot-pounds of torque. Now we're going to try something um, rather than, I was thinking about when we were doing all this testing, hey, maybe this would be a good opportunity to try a different camshaft because quite honestly that 220-224 cam, probably not my favorite cam for this application. I know every cam is a blower cam, <laughs> just like every cam is a turbo cam, but what I wanted to do is I would have rather had a camshaft that we had that made you know, more NA power to start out with, so it then make more power under boost. But we didn't want to go through um, taking everything apart to do a cam swap. And besides, this was <laughs> this was one of the only cams I had available. I had, a, I had this one, I had a stock one, and I think I had one other cam at the time, but it was a smaller crane cam, so we didn't do a cam swap. But what I did have available and uh, was a set of roller rockers basically now it wasn't going to change the camshaft dramatically but it did show a, a power gain so we'll take a look at that what i did was put a set of i know i'm showing here <laughs> i've got some 172s in the photo back there in the back background photo but these were actually we went to a set of 1.8 roller rockers on so i'll try to find a picture so i can put those up so you guys can take a look at those but we went from the factory 1.7 rocker to a 1.8 roller rocker so you guys can argue back and forth how much of it was the roller tip because we, they both have roller fulcrums and how much of it was the ratio change. I think most of it probably you guys would agree that it definitely is the ratio change. But if we look at the ratio change going from a 1.7 to a 1.8, well, what you do is so that you can calculate what the load lift is. That's how much lift the camshaft actually has. So if we take the 575 lift offered by this camshaft, that's multiplied by the 1.7, and we divide it by 1.7, we see that we have 338 thousandths lobe lift. If we then multiply that by 1.8, we get, uh, we, we've increased the lift basically up to a 609 lift camshaft. For us. So we went from 575 lift up to 609 lift just from the rocker change. And the rocker change took a little bit, this, th these particular rockers we needed, um, or they included uh, the rockers themselves and the hold downs and, and guide plates and stuff. So we, we ran this rocker change. And here's what happened when we increased the rocker ratio on this particular combination. We actually got some pretty good gains. Um, you can see we picked power up from 492 horsepower up to 500, almost 510, 509.7. Peak torque was up as well. So it helped through most of the curve. 507.5, so 508 foot-pounds of torque from the rocker change, which was good. Um, it's important to note also, like I said, I, w I wasn't responsible for the tuning. I didn't have any MEFI experience, and this was done quite a while ago. But I also show, and, and didn't realize it until I started looking at the data right now, there is also a one-degree timing change between these runs. So we may have tried more timing. We went from 29 degrees with the fast manifold up to 30 degrees with the 1.8 rockers. I can tell you from past experience, very rarely do I see uh, a change at all and certainly not a big change in power going from 29 to 30 degrees. The only time that ever manifests itself is when we have cylinder heads that have really big chambers on them. Like if we go from a 799 head to a 317 head, the 317 head with the big chamber always wants another degree or two of timing and it does pick up power. But typically these um, ported 706 heads like we were running here don't pick up power. But it's important to note, I wanted to, I wanted to let you know in full disclosure, but we did pick up good gains from the rockers going from the stock rocker to this roller rocker. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we finally get to add some boost. Okay, guys, now it's time to jump in and finally add boost to our combination. We're going to add a Vortec twin screw supercharger. You can see back behind me, I have a, a photo of it. We'll show you a good photo of it so you can take a look at it. And here's a quick reminder. We started out with our truck manifold and then added the fast manifold and then added our rockers. And that put us at our baseline of over 500 horsepower. But here's what happened when we added our Vortec twin screw supercharger. And this was kind of unique. This was a Lysolm twin screw supercharger. I think it was two liters or 2.3 2 liters. And it did very well. This was run at less than 10 pounds of boost, fairly conservative tune. We had about 19 or 20 degrees of timing. And again, with the MEFI setup, this thing made 665 horsepower and continued to 
would continue to pull out past 6,000 if we wanted to run that. And the reason for that, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, when you have a positive displacement supercharger like this, and this is typical of most of them, this one also had an air-to-water intercooler, and because of the packaging combining the supercharger on top and then the intercooler underneath, what this necessitates is having a very short runner intake manifold. So this is typical of, of either a twin screw or a other kind of positive displacement like a root supercharger. The short runner intake manifold obviously hurts torque production. So if you were to run just the manifold by itself and compare it to the truck manifold or the fast manifold, torque production would be way down, especially in this sub 6,000 RPM range. So the thing that the positive, super, positive displacement supercharger has going for it is that it more than makes up for that loss of torque from the runner length by having immediate boost response. You can see this thing had a fantastically flat torque curve and it produced 600 and a peak of 654 foot pounds. But torque production, to give you an idea how flat it was, exceeded 650 foot pounds for a thousand RPM from like 3,600 RPM out to past 4,600 RPM. So it was like, you know, tabletop kind of smooth. No shortage of torque production on this combination. The other thing that I wanted to talk about on this particular supercharger, one of the things I would have liked to have seen on this is a bigger throttle inlet. Now this one, we ran a 92 millimeter fast throttle body on it to feed the supercharger. But even this, I think was seemed, I remember it as being an oversized for the um, opening that went in to feed the blower. On a positive displacement supercharger, whether it's a twin screw like this or a root supercharger like a you know Magnus and TVS 2650, all of those, you want to have as big of a throttle opening going into the blower as you can. This was evident by the fact that even at this fairly low power level and less than 10 pounds of boost, we had vacuum present between the throttle body and the supercharger. We had 1.6 to 1.7 inches of vacuum between the throttle body and the supercharger, which shows us that inlet system is just too small. We didn't have anything in front of the throttle body, so it has to be the throttle body itself or the opening in the intake manifold producing that restriction. And what that translates directly to, if we were to get rid of that restriction, the boost would go up and the power would go up even at this same blower speed. So it's one of the things I would have liked to have seen at least have an opening that would, be, would have been big enough to run the same throttle body that we ran on the fast manifold you know, at least 102. And although I've seen those be, you know, a little touchy during for drivability and stuff, anybody that's run a big throttle body on a, on a positive displacement supercharger will attest to that. But you could also, it would give you the option of running the big throttle body if you wanted to make lots of power, but also restricting it down. If you want to put the stock throttle body on it, you just put an adapter on it that necks it down to a 78 millimeter throttle body. You could run a 90 or a 92 or 102, but it'd be nice to have that option so that you could make even more power if you wanted to do this and push this thing. I honestly think that they made this for a guy wanting to put it on a truck application, a 485360 kind of thing. This was a cathedral port application. So for the guys doing that, this would be a perfect combination. Plenty of power, plenty of torque. But for a guy like most of us that always wants to turn it up, it would have been nice to see a 102 millimeter throttle body, you know, the whole inlet system so that we could choose. I'm Mr. Holder. Please make sure like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.